Because God gave a message to the Seventh-day Adventist Church about help. It wasn't just for the Adventist Church for everybody. It wasn't just for us on Papa, you know, Papa's on Sabbath, but every day of our day of the week. And uh, so it's not been easy. Lost a few pounds already. I praise God for that. My blood pressure's gone down. I praise God for that. Um, my mind's been a little more clear. I praise God for that. Uh, but my wife thinks I'm crazy. So pray for that. <laughs> I had pizza last night with no cheese and. <laughs> Some of y'all know that from Spy Kids, and some of y'all don't, but for those of you who remember that, I said, really, honey? She said, yep, you're crazy. <laughs> but God is good, and he's going to help me through it, and I believe at the end of this year, I'm going to be closer to Jesus. That's what I believe, I'm going to be closer to Jesus. Well, let's get started. Um, I'm going to ask that Pastor Lillard would hand me my Bible, just right there. And we'll turn in our Bible to Ezekiel chapter 37, so we can get kind of a backdrop. Uh, to our, our message today. Ezekiel chapter 37. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 37. I want to do something a little different to, uh, something I grew up with. We're going to read responsibly. Is that all right? Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse 1. So I'll read the first verse, we'll read the next verse. And read it from the screen so we can all be singing the same thing. So I'm say that. <laughs> all right, Ezekiel chapter 37, one, uh, verse 1, I'm reading from the King James Version. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. <laughs> And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will call the breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And 
May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Heavenly Father, we look forward to hearing from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week I was online and I saw a cartoon. Uh, you know, kind of comic strip, political thing. In the cartoon, Obama is standing in front of a closet. And he's got his hands like this. And he looks a little nervous and anxious. To the side of the closet are a lot of skeletons and bones just trying to press their way out of the closet. Then there's a caption that reads, Bush's Skeleton. <laughs> So what it in essence was saying is that Obama is trying to make sure his administration is not affected by Bush's skeleton. But while we may find that it, as humorous, isn't it true that we all have some skeletons in the closet? That we're trying to desperately keep in the closet so that we don't get embarrassed or so that our administration of our home, administration on our job, administration on school, doesn't be affected by it. I would submit to you that not only do individuals have skeletons, but so do organizations. Now I believe that the SDA church has three skeletons in its closet. Now, before we go any further, I, I want to talk a little bit about skeletons and the whole phrase. When we talk about skeletons, it's usually a dark secret. It's something that's vile. It's something that, 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 that we're, 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 if it got out, we'd be in trouble. Okay. I mean, some serious trouble because of the nature of it. Then there's another idea when we talk about skeletons. It's something that we're embarrassed about. <coughs> It's something that we're ashamed of. It's something that we are uncomfortable talking about. And it is these skeletons that I want to talk about today. It is these skeletons that I think that are in the SDA closet, the Seventh-day Adventist Church's closet. These three skeletons we're ashamed of, we're embarrassed by, and we're uncomfortable with. So let's look at our first skeleton. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> the first skeleton I believe in the SDA closet is this. You say, well, why would we be embarrassed or ashamed or uncomfortable about talking about the Sabbath? Say it, Pastor. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had the skeleton, that skeleton in the closet for a long time. Mm. You know, when I was a kid and, and we'd be running up and down, my brother Brian and Lord, we'd be running up and down the street, maybe playing hide and seek, I might be playing football with the boys, and, and, and it would be Friday. And it would be late in the afternoon. Mm. And the sun was almost set. And, and you know you just got to get one more game in. <laughs> and you know you just you, you get one more game in. You're hoping, you're looking over the horizon, hoping the sun's not quite down. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mother would walk up to the screen door of our house. They still have screen doors. And she would cry out those infamous words. Mm. <laughs> Mark, Brian, and Lori, it's Sabbath! <laughs> the Sabbath had to go on the top. You understand? It was embarrassing. I was ashamed. It was uncomfortable. I have to explain. What was your mom? What's your mom doing? <laughs> You gotta take a bath. <laughs> so, so you say, yeah, but you grew up, so didn't you take it out the closet? No. 
Uh, tell the was preaching and I was taking swimming lessons and, and my instructor was just like amazed. And he invited me in the Linwood Shark. I mean, to join the Linwood Shark, which was a city uh, swimming team. And he wanted me to be part of the team. And I ran home and I told my, or my dad that brought me the lessons. I told him, he said, oh, great. Ran home, told my mom, and she said, well, what day do they have practices on? <laughs> <laughs> so, in my naivety at the time, I thought she just wanted to make sure I got there on time and got there on the right day. <laughs> so I went back to the, to the swim coach, and, and he said, well, uh, Sabbath, so Saturday. <laughs> Oh, no. Now, I finally got a sport I'm excellent at, and I can't even play. I can't even participate in it. So, so you know what, okay, so I'm going to feel me, so I'm going to feel So the Sabbath had to go in the closet. Because I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, and was uncomfortable, and was making my life miserable. Well, you said, well, yeah, but you grew up, so you became a young adult, and you know, then what's the problem? Well, the problem was, I needed money. In order to get money, I had to get a job. In order to get a job, I had to fill out an application. And then after my application, I have to have an interview. And when I show up to the interview, and inevitably they would ask, so what's your availability? What days can you work? Now I gotta go bring up the Sabbath. And I okay, well fine, so why are you off on Saturday? <laughs> now you gotta explain, well actually, it's Friday. <laughs> it's Saturday. Oh, no problem. We'll, we'll have you just work nine to five, no problem on Friday, and we'll just have you off on Saturday. That's when I have to tell her, but there's still one more problem. <laughs> Sometimes that's going to work out. <laughs> but other times, they ain't going to work out too good. So you know the Sabbath had to go in the closet. Sorry. You're a member of the church, active member, pastor, yeah, well. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm in a church yeah. that is renting a church from people who don't keep the Sabbath. And of course, I've been in churches where they were renting their church to a church that didn't keep the Sabbath. <laughs> And so it became very uncomfortable to talk about the Sabbath. Because you're worshiping with, or someone's worshiping with you, who doesn't keep it. And you guys are enjoying the same church on just on different days. <coughs> so, you know, that had to go in the closet. And you're like, you know what, just look, look, look. You just need to grow up, do the right thing. But you know the problem with that? I look to the north, and I look to the south, I look to the east, and I look to the west, and I saw other people were putting the Sabbath in the closet too. And then the best, or maybe the worst reason I put it in the closet was because I found that I wasn't keeping it like the Bible told me to. Uh -huh. And so the Sabbath had to go in. Well, that's just the first one. The second skeleton in the essay closet is this, I believe. You'd say, well, why on earth would the second coming be in the closet? <coughs> well, it's been in the closet for me for a long time. Well. 
Because when I was young, when my mama told me that Jesus was coming soon, <laughs> that meant I wasn't going to get to junior high school. <laughs> I wasn't getting to high school. I wasn't going to make it to college. I wasn't going to be able to get married. And I wasn't going to be able to have kids. And so the second coming had to go. Because <laughs> I had all those on my list. But he said, yeah, but that was when you were a kid, and you grew up, and you know, yeah, you grew up. And then I started hearing about the money changing in college. You know what I'm talking about, but you know. <laughs> If people started talking about the different signs of the times and, and the things in the, in, in the physical realm and, and they were talking about earthquakes and tornadoes and I remember a tornado happening in, in, in Long Beach. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it was that. Snow, it snowed one time in reality. I said, like, Jesus is on the way. <laughs> and then recently my son back was telling me that they had an earthquake in D.C. not so, so long ago. I'm like, Jesus, oh yeah, Jesus is just... Just, just get ready, just look up. <laughs> but then he didn't come. And so, that gun has on the closet. He's like, yeah, 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 but you know, um, you, you have to have grown at you, know Jesus is coming again. Yeah, but there's a little, little issue. Every now and again, I get this little revelation. A couple dreams about the second gun. Anybody got that one? Yeah, yeah. And I had the nerve to tell somebody. Mm. <laughs> Even had a date. Well, I want you to know 2009 is coming and gone. <laughs> <laughs> and we are still here. <laughs> and because I told a couple of people I have to quit the second coming, in the closet. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. But the reason that it's also in the closet is because I look north. And I look south. And I look east. And I look west. And I saw other people put in the second place in the closet. And maybe the best reason, or maybe the worst reason I put the second coming in the closet was because I was ready for Jesus to come. And so it had to go in the closet. Tell the truth, Pastor. Well, there's one more. This one, <clears throat> is the sanctuary. Another skeleton in the SDA closet. You might think, well, why on earth would someone put the sanctuary in the closet? Shame to get out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Why would the sanctuary need to be in the closet? Well, if I can be transparent with you, it's in the closet because most of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when I said sanctuary, you thought I was talking about this sanctuary. <laughs> and when I said message, if I did sanctuary message, you're thinking about the message that was going to happen in this sanctuary. But the sanctuary message isn't that. And so it needed to go in the closet, I mean, right away. Because <laughs> nobody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but another reason it needs to go in the closet and win for me, I don't know about you, was because as I began to study it, it's pretty deep. Come on now. It's pretty involved. And I thought to myself, man, if I start talking about this, the person's going to have to be a historian. They're going to have to be a mathematician. And they're going to have to be a theologian all in one. And so rather than look crazy, 
talking about 23 million day prophecy and 457 BC and Artaxerxes and Persia and all the other stuff, it just had to go in the clock. <coughs> And then you say, yeah, yeah, but you know, you really should. You know that's an important thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. But the problem is, for me, some people are saying, y'all didn't get it right the first time. Y'all thought Jesus was coming in October 22nd, 1844. So what makes us think you got it right the second time? And then, of course, I look north and I... I look south and I look east and I look west and other people have put it in the closet. So I now put it in the closet and then maybe the best reason or the worst reason I put it in the closet was because I wasn't ready to judge me. Okay. I wasn't ready to be judged while I was living. And so it had to go in the closet. Now, the sense all of these need to come out of the closet. They need to stay out of the closet. I, I want you to know that, that by the grace of God, I encourage you and me and all of us as Seventh-day Adventists, and, and even if we're not Seventh-day Adventists, look into these teachings. Amen. Because you're going to find Jesus in every last one of them. You're going to find him at the end, and you're going to find him at the beginning. And you're going to find him right there because Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and he is in every single thing that he teaches. Jesus said, oh, you, you have studied through the scripture, you've gone through and you think by these things you have salvation, but these are they that testify of me. Woo! And so they've got to come out and they've got to stay out of the closet. And if you get nothing else out of the sermon, make sure you keep them out of the closet. Now, as much as you and I will put them in the closet, and I put them in the closet, and, and other people put them in the closet, we need to understand that there's an enemy of our souls who wants them in the closet. Why? Because they're pointing to Jesus. Yes. See, if it wasn't pointing to Jesus, he'd be like, yeah, what you got in that closet? Take it out. Take it out of the closet. But he don't want it in the closet. I mean, he wants this in the closet because he knows it talks about Jesus. Right, right, When you right. have a mature understanding of it. So what he has done is he has dressed it up in other things so that we're embarrassed about it, so that we're ashamed of it. So he has dressed the Sabbath up. <laughs> so that the Sabbath is about works. He's dressed the Sabbath up and made it legalistic. So that if you're doing it, you're being a legalist. If you're doing it, you're, you're, you're terribly conservative and, and, and you really don't know about the grace of God. So, so, so he's dressed it up so that we think it's all about words. Preach, Pastor. And so if we feel tempted to put it in the closet, it's because of the devil's dressing it up. Then, he's taking the sanctuary and he's dressed it up too. So it's so old-fashioned that why would anybody want to be worried with that thing? <laughs> what you want with that old thing? The sanctuary? Man, look. Jesus saved, Jesus saved. <laughs> and he does, and I thank God he's my high priest in his sanctuary. Someone say that. Say to me. <laughs> and so he's dressing up in all of this so that we won't even think it's relevant to him. <coughs> and then he's taking the second coming. Mm. Watch out. <coughs> mercy. Have mercy.
and made us chicken little. <laughs> The sky is falling, the sky is falling. You know the story of Chicken Little, an acorn falls on his head, and he believes because something above him fell on his head that the whole world is about to end, and the whole sky is about to crash on him, and he's running around telling everybody the sky is falling, but of course the sky is not falling, so the devil tries to dress up the second coming in such a way that he makes us look like alarmists and fanatics, so they will put them in the closet. But can you turn with me to John? I'll give you the chapter so that I can open it. 